Isla, a youngest member of the Plain Talks team, is busy trying to learn a new Drake song on her favourite video game, Guitar Hero. But what does this have to do with artificial intelligence? Stick around to find out. Artificial intelligence is a technique which enables machines to mimic human behaviour. Machine learning is a subset of AI. This technique uses statistical methods to enable machines to improve with experience. We've talked about supervised and unsupervised learning in the last episode, but still have to learn about reinforcement learning. So let's get to it. Reinforcement learning allows the machine to train and take suitable actions with the objective of learning and maximizing potential rewards. The machine is referred to as an agent who must learn what actions to take to maximize any signal reward. An example of this is the Google AI system AlphaGo that we talked about in episode 4. The AI system beat world champion Lee Seidel in March 2016. The AI system's focus, even in this example, was to maximize the reward. The machine, referred to as the agent in reinforcement learning, had to learn how many different options it had with each move it could make and the likely outcome of how the human would respond for it to learn and make the best choice to be able to have the highest probability of returning the highest reward, or in this case, winning the game. It would have played the game hundreds and hundreds of times before playing the world champion, and ensure it learns what exact moves in what scenarios make the best sense for achieving the maximum reward. Only when this testing and learning phase had been completed would it go on to play and eventually beat the world champion. In reinforcement learning, there are five key areas. The agent, which in the previous example, would be the Google AI system AlphaGo. Action. This is the move that is made by the agent. This can be in many different directions. The environment. In this example, this would be Lee Seidel, the goal world champion and be based on both the move he would be making and the board itself as the agent needs to adapt to the environment and learn. 4. State. This is the game and layer of the board. And 5. Reward. In the case of our example, this would not be an instant reward, but the probability of the reward, which would be of course to win the game, would be increased or decreased with each move the system makes. In reinforcement learning, there is no predefined data. The input depends on the actions taken by the agent. These actions are then recorded in the form of matrices so that it can serve as a memory to the agent so as the agent explores the environment, it will collect data which will then be used to get the output. So let's learn from Isla, who is busy playing Guitar Hero one of their favourite video games. Isla loves music and loves video games. A natural favourite game, of course, is Guitar Hero. Now, if you ever play Guitar Hero, you know that she must learn to play a song as shown on screen and pick the correct notes on the guitar in order to be rewarded with points. Each time Isla plays the right note, she generates more and more points. An instant reward, with a hope to getting to the end of the song and playing it successfully to achieve the delayed but ultimate reward of getting to the next level. However, if Isla plays the wrong notes during the game, she is then penalised by losing points. In either case, Isla is going through a reinforcement learning process and remembering where she made mistakes for when she was penalised the next time she plays. This time, she does not make the same mistake again because she has learned using reinforcement learning and this time, because she's made the right choice, is rewarded. So where do we see reinforcement learning used today? And what kind of problems are solved using reinforcement learning? Reinforcement learning is very big in both the gaming industry, where it is used to build games, and robotics, where it is used to train robots to perform human-like tasks. It is also used in robot navigation, stock trading and assembly line processes in factories. 
comparatively different to supervised and unsupervised learning covered last week, in reinforcement learning, the key difference is that the input itself depends on the actions we take. For example, in robotics, we might start in a situation where a robot does not know anything about the surroundings it is in. After it performs certain actions, it finds out more about the world or its environment. But the world it sees depends on whether it chooses to move right, or whether it chooses to move left, or whether it chooses to move forward. In reinforcement learning, there is no predefined data set given to the machine. The agent does it all from scratch. The whole reinforcement learning process is a training and testing phase. Since there is no predefined data given to the machine, it has to learn everything on its own and it starts by exploring and collecting data. The agent is a lot like a human child. Just like how a baby is clueless about the world, the agent also initially has no idea about its environment. But as it explores the environment, it starts learning. It learns from the mistakes it makes and it basically learns from its own experience. Rewards and punishments can be thought of with respect to a video game like Mario. In Mario, when you win a state, you get extra coins, but when you fail, you have to go back to the same state and try again. Wow, another amazing episode. Our question this week comes from Lily Fang, who asks, do you need to have an expert level math background to deploy and build machine learning algorithms for problem solving? To deploy and build machine learning algorithms for problem solving, you need some level of understanding of math, but you also need to have an understanding of data science. In episode three, we simplify the eight steps of data science by comparing it to making my favorite Indian curry, paneer butter masala. Go check it out. Math is important in machine learning because everything is either a vector or a matrix. So you're going to need to understand linear algebra and you're also going to be using something called gradient descent, which relies on calculus. And of course, there is going to be some probability and statistics. As a starting point, you need to understand the basics of vectors, matrices and calculus, which we'll cover and simplify for you in future Plain Talks episodes. Stick with us. So much to cover and all to come in simplified bite-sized chunks in each weekly episode of Plain Talks. Lily, thanks for sending us your question and getting involved. If you want to send us your questions, comments, suggestions or ideas, please email tarv at plaintalks.co.uk. Remember to smash the like and hit the subscribe button so you know when each episode is released. Next time someone says they are using machine learning to solve your problem, you can explore further and ask them, are they using supervised, unsupervised or even reinforcement learning? Plain Talks, episode 6 done. From myself and Isla, we'll see you all next time.